Zygonesia Murasaki Kumachi. Great name, love it. It just flows off the tongue with ease. And this is actually the name of a Japanese individual. I couldn't find if he actually has something to do with creating this hybrid or because somebody just wanted to honor him. But Murasaki Komachi and Komachi being his surname, except in our case here with the orchid, it's actually combined. So thank you very much for joining me on this care video of my Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. Today, I've teamed up with Attainable Green, plants and other things, and mostly orchids. Turns out we all have this orchid, and we managed to collaborate a date in order to upload our care videos of how we take care of our orchid in our separate climates. So the links will be down below of the channels I just mentioned, Attainable Green, Plants and Other Things, and Mostly Orchids, because I have a method of caring for mine that might differentiate with theirs, and maybe four videos on one day regarding the care. If you're looking for this orchid and wondering how to take care of it, it might give a great spectrum regarding the different ways and methods this orchid can be grown. So I'm down here in the Mediterranean, south of Spain, and I have uh, my winter lows are five degrees Celsius, and my summers just get very, very hot. So this orchid is currently living outside, and we are in the middle of winter where my temperatures can get as low as five. Normally they hover around eight, nine degrees, but if you consider worst case scenario, then this one actually will live down when it's five degrees. And it is the first year that I'm doing this because the previous two years that I've had it, you can see that I've been losing all the leaves of the growths. And I don't know if that is something to do with the trait of the orchid or because of my culture. I have been babying it quite a while. So as of the point of filming, we are on Christmas day and I want to get this clip in because mine is in bud. As you can see, I have two spikes, but I have lots and lots of buds that I'm hoping to have bloom by the 10th of January, by the time this video is uploaded. And if not, then so be it. I'll put up a picture of the blooms that I had when I got her, and I have not rebloomed her since. Let's talk about the parentage a little bit, because the fact that this is a hybrid that actually grows warmer than any other zygopetalum hybrid out there is because of the parentage. It's 25% Zygonesia rock brune and 75% Aganesia cyanea. And the cyanea is in the warm to hot growing Amazon basin. So having combined certain hybrids this one can be grown a little bit warmer and maybe that is why it is starting to do well for me. And I'll just have to wait and see whether it can take the cold, cold nights that are coming up. But I have to do something in order to make this orchid bloom. It looks like now it's quite healthy. It has not lost the leaves of the previous year's growth. So I'm hoping that the blooms that I've triggered or the spikes so far, no blooms yet, that they were triggered because of the cold temperatures that it got at night. During the summer, I actually had her living inside at a very, very bright location, no direct sun, but dappled sun in the winter is fine. And that's why I can show her here on my west side in full sun because of the climate. It is very sunny, but it is definitely not hot sun. And in the summer, she is in super bright shade simply because of the angle of the sun that doesn't reach into the dining room space where she lives, but right up against the glass in order to get maximum light. So I'm still testing and experimenting which versions are the best, and especially temperature, concerning temperature. So far, if this is a trend that continues, then when the temperatures drop at night, my Zygonesia for the future reference will be living outside. So the beauty of this one, and that's why I like Zygos so much, if I could just manage to get them to bloom again, is the fact that you already know whether it's going to bloom or not based on the fact that it starts spikes with a new growth that hasn't actually matured. And this gives a great opportunity 
of being able to have two bloomings within a 12 month period if cultivated correctly. So that is where I am headed. Now I know I will get some blooms. It can't be that they are all gonna blast, but I already had one bloom up here on this spike blast. That is not a sheath that has gone yellow. That's a bud, which is a shame, but my goodness, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buds in total. I think we'll get one to make it through. What difficulties have I had with this one? Well, basically, um, that's not her fault, it's mine. I was stubborn. I have a specific setup that I want my orchids to be in, LECA and self-watering. And as these orchids likes to be constantly moist, I find this system to be super advantageous for the orchid because it is constantly in a reservoir of water. Sometimes with fertilizer, 300 ppm, when it's growing, a spike, and sometimes just RO water, which sometimes has seaweed in it. And when I say these sometimes, it all depends on the growth pattern of the orchid. If she were, for example, to be growing a new growth, 300 ppm of fertilizer. If she is now growing a new growth and spikes, same thing, fertilizer. When she gets to this point and is not growing a new growth, just water, with an added touch of seaweed ever so often. I don't make a rule about when I put the seaweed in. It just so happens I have seaweed in there. I'm okay, fill up the reservoir and then there's seaweed in there. I think I remember the fragrance to be somewhat musky and spicy. Uh, it's been two years, so I can't be 100% sure at this stage. And I hope that we can film her in time for the release of this video and then I can confirm that fragrance. I'm not 100% sure. The struggle I had with the transition was basically just root adaptation and timing of a repot. It does inherit a little bit the sensitivity of a zygopetalum that, you know, the, the roots are like glass. They look fleshy, they look like cymbidium roots, but they are super, super sensitive and don't like to be messed with. So that was my issue with the transition of when I got her, she was in sphagnum moss. Um, when I transitioned her then into my LECA is to get her happy in that setup. And possibly that's why I was losing leaves because she was excluding a lot of energy into trying to make roots grow. Until I don't repot her, I don't know if she's got happy roots or not, but she is so pot bound that this is going to be quite the task to be very, very diligent on the unpotting and repotting. It could trigger a setback, it may not. If the roots are healthy, all I will do is up-pot. And that is why I like to use inorganic media because it leaves me that option. Mineral buildup, that is too much fertilizer, so more flushing or pipe down on the fertilizer. In my case, more flushing. It's so easy in the winter right now to be a little bit complacent with the flushing because you think, well, it's not absorbing anything. I don't have to fill the reservoir as often. And that is a big mistake. Flush, 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 which was a massive factor in getting it successfully transitioned into LECA. I flushed, I flushed, I flushed almost every day to keep the oxygen going through the pot and making sure that it always had a fresh water supply. And basically for now, I think I've touched all the main components regarding how I care for mine. And I will then revisit this orchid, hopefully by the time she blooms, regardless of what happens, we also have a time frame how long the spikes develop and bud and then bloom out. Because in my case, these spikes have now been going four and a half weeks. And I don't see much difference in the spike development in the last three days. So a long time goes between seeing a spike to getting it to bloom. I hope to see you shortly. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the next clip shows us blooms. January 9th, oh dear. And a very windy day. And look, I have no blooms to show you on this video. Two weeks and two days, something like that. 
but we have substantial increase in the size of the buds. If that's anything to show for. Yeah, well, no blooms. I will be inserting pictures of the first bloom that I had from this orchid two years ago. Well, we haven't lost another bud. And since this video was made, the orchid has tolerated temperatures as low as five degrees Celsius. Something I wanted to qualify that I didn't in the first clip. You probably saw the microfiber on the surface of my LECA. That is because of how the roots are growing out, sort of above, because as the roots are occupying more and more space in the pot, the LECA starts to rise and the orchid rises with it, exposing the roots. And in order for them at their initial stages of growth not to dry off, I have a microfiber that I place over that area and I spray just with plain RO water to keep it humid. That's one reason. And the other reason is my climate is super dry in the summer. And that's how I try to maintain a little more humidity around the base of the orchid without always having to spray and possibly compromising any new growths. So I can control it much easier. And if she gets into growth, then I don't have to address any part of the LECA surface. I can maintain a little bit higher humidity above the surface here without directing it into the growth and possibly ruining it. Now, I'm going to spread this out a little further. On a windy day like this, I like to make sure that there's enough humidity around, even though it is winter. The air is extremely dry. Constantly moist for this orchid also means the surface. Yes, it's a shame that I don't have any blooms. I also think that the very, very quick drop in temperatures has slowed down the growth of the buds. And I'm sure that any day now they will open. But for the sake of this video, I wanted to wait until right, right to the wire to film this really hoping for them to open but it is the 9th of January now and we are uploading tomorrow. We will see this orchid again of course when she is in bloom but this gives you an idea of how long spikes can take to develop and to bloom especially if grown outside in cooler temperatures. I would like to thank Attainable Green, mostly orchids, plants and other things for joining me on this care collab video of Zaganesia Murasaki Komachi. Very, very much appreciated. Links will be in the description below to their videos. And I hope that this helped you if you were searching for this specific orchid to know how it's being taken care of in different setups in different environments. I look forward to your feedback. Let me just remind you that in case you have this orchid as well and you do YouTube videos, please feel free to get in touch with any of us. And if you have a care video that you would like to then do in future, we will always be very happy to attach that link into our video description. Thank you everybody very, very much for watching. Thank you again to the three channels that have participated. I hope that you all have a wonderful day and that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.